There is power, there is power in the door. There is power, power, there is power in the door. There is victory, there is victory, there is victory in the door. There is victory, there is victory, there is victory in the door. I see deliverance, I see deliverance, see deliverance in the door. See deliverance, I see deliverance, I see deliverance in the door. So the ark was the medium God used to preserve his people from the judgment that was going to inflict on the whole world because he said that he had found the whole earth to be wicked. We go to verse 6, verse 5, uh, Genesis 6, verse 5. Yeah. And what's God, uh, Genesis 6, verse 5? And God saw that the wickedness mm -hmm. of man was great in the head. Yes. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Six. Alright, go on. And it, re it reflected the Lord that he had made man on the earth and mm -hmm. it grieved him at his heart. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Hmm? Both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air. For I, for it repented me that I have made them. Hmm? But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's it. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because of the life Noah lived. He only was the one that found grace in the eyes of the Lord simply because of his holy, obedient life. Now, God said he regretted making man. <clears throat> Maybe not cause the God, our maker, to regret over making us. He said he grieved him. God sorrowed. He was sad because of man. Why? Because he found that every imagination of man's heart was evil, continually. That means there was no good. Can you imagine that every thought, every action was to steal, to kill, to destroy? There was never anybody saying, let's even do good for this person, or let's be kind, let's show mercy. No. It was all death, 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 destruction, destruction, envy, pride, all these little things. That was in the heart of man. And so God felt, there is no hope for these people. I cannot change them. They are beyond change. The only thing is to destroy them and start fresh. And this is how Noah was called. Because only he, can you imagine, only one man, the whole earth, found grace in God's sight. If God was to come today to say, I want to destroy this whole earth, how many of us will find grace 
in his sight. How many will be called into that ark of salvation? How many will be saved from the judgment that will going to come upon them all earth? And it's going to come because God said that he will no longer destroy the earth with a flood, but the next one will be with fire. That's the book of 1 Peter. It will be with fire. So God gave Noah instructions because he knew that he was going to use the flood to destroy the earth. So he gave Noah instructions. You see verse 17. It says that uh, this is the fashion. Okay, and God said unto Noah, verse 13, the end of all flesh come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. This is verse, uh, Genesis 6, verse 13. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Okay, make the ark and half of gopher wood. Rooms shall make an ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. So God gave Noah specific instructions how to make that ark. And he made it impermeable to water because pitch is what they used to make the roads. Uh, something thick and impermeable to line that ark so that water would not go in. They didn't have steel or anything like that. It was just this pitch. I told him how to make it the length of it at 300 cubits, the breadth 50 cubits, and the height 30 cubits. The window shall make the ark. And he gave me all the instructions. So I told him he was going to bring a flood upon the ark to destroy all flesh where is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the ark shall die. Both with you will I establish my covenant, and you shall come up to the ark, you and your sons and your, and your wife, and their sons' wives with you. So God is this covenant with Noah because of the holy life he led. And he destroyed every other thing. So those people are telling you that, ah, how can God send me to hell? That means God is going to send the whole earth to hell. So I've been reading my lips, he's already done it once. If God is going to destroy the whole earth, and say one person, he can do it, and he's already done it once. So don't say, ah, all of us are going to go to hell in that case, and be laughing. Oh yes, everybody can go to hell except one person. Yes, God has done it before. So don't look at numbers. God doesn't care about numbers. He says, and God do not change. His principles remain the same. Sin, time of Noah, is still sin today. God did not change the definition of sin. He did not lower the standards of uh, holiness. So if you think that, oh, everybody is doing it, that means it's right, you are completely mistaken. All those people who you think they are going to go with you, <laughs> you'll be shocked. So when people say, oh, uh, I go to hell, hell will be fun. Hell will be there. All these will just be there. Oh, I wish they knew what it is like in hell. If they knew that, they would be saying that. So God told Noah to come and his house into that ark. That ark was the safety, safety nets that could save them from the coming judgments. Now, what ark are you in today? If judgment was going to come upon the ark today, where will you hide? What would be the ark that you can hide him in? Because judgment is definitely going to come upon the earth, this ark. This ark is overripe for judgment because the world has now become so wicked. And Jesus Christ said it will be that in the time of Noah when he comes back. Well, what happened in the time of uh, Noah? Sodom and Gomorrah, their own sexuality, there's all these things that were going on, and that's exactly what's going on. Right now, good is bad, bad is good. There's no difference between good and bad. Everything's relative. There's no more right or wrong. This is the same that was happening in the time of Noah. So this whole act is overripe because of judgment. So the question is, are you going to run to the ark before the judgment comes? See, and for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Is God going to say the same thing about you and I when it comes to judge? That you, out of your whole house, have seen you righteous and I'm going to save you from my judgments. Ask yourself today, if judgment will come tonight, would I be among those who will be in the ark of salvation? Now, the Bible says that nobody knows when Jesus is going to come back. Even Jesus Christ said, I don't know, it's only the Father that knows. He may come tonight, he may come tomorrow, we don't know. But are you going to be among those ones that will go with him? Or those that will be left behind judgment? See, let's go to Matthew 24 38. First Matthew 24, 38. Matthew 24, 
Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 24, 38. Matthew 11, 28. Where were they first? And first Peter 3, 20. For as in the days mm -hmm. that were before, mm -hmm. the flood they were eating and drinking, mm -hmm. marrying and giving in marriage, mm -hmm. until the day that Noah, now Noah, entered into the ark, mm -hmm. and knew not until the flood came, mm -hmm. and took them all away, mm -hmm. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's it. So let's go over that. The way the says it's going to be in the time of Noah. They were eating. They were drinking, they were getting married, they were giving a marriage until Noah entered the ark and the flood came. Now was, that was no warning sign. Nobody was going to say, ah, this guy is going to come tomorrow, you better come to your... No way. In fact, everything will go as it is now. In fact, we'll get more, you know, enjoyment. There will be no suspicion of when it's going to come back. It's going to come back suddenly without warning. So what does that tell you and I? Live every day as if it's the last day of this ark. Because if you did that, you will not miss that ark. Now, this church is supposed to be the last ark of salvation. That means it's supposed to be a container to take you from the flood of judgment outside. That water was the judgment of God upon the earth to destroy all sin and iniquity. The same way God is going to enjoy this world again. With his fire. That was the first Peter 3 20. With his fire. So, are you in the ark? Or will you be in the ark when the union comes? Go on, first Peter 3 20. First Peter 3 20. First Peter 3 20. Disobedient when one the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was prepared, where few its souls were saved. The like figure we are to of baptism, even now, does save us. Not the washing away of the filth of the flesh, but the hands of a good conscience towards God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is again calling people to his ark. How many will respond? Just like in the time of Noah. And people were wondering, why is this crazy man building an ark? 120 years, and no single convert. Nobody ever came to his church. Nobody ever said, Noah, what are you doing? Can you tell me why you're doing this? 120 years, not a single convert. And suddenly, the flood came, carrying them all away. The same God is calling people now. Let's go to Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28. Jesus is calling you and I. Are you going to come into the ark? 28. Come mm to me. All you who labor. I am heaven daily. Yes. And I will give you rest. Church. It says, Come unto me, 
Oh, it's a labor and a heavy lading. Heavy lading with the trials and tribulations of this war. He says, Come. Come. I'm asking you to come. And you what? You find the rest for your souls. But despite the invitation, many could not take up that offer. He didn't say, Come and I'll charge you $40. Come, I'll give you $100. He said, Come, it's free. Salvation is free. Are you going to take up the offer and enter that ark before judgment comes? So, God told Noah to take every king beast, seven peers, and on king beast, two peers. So, right away, you can see that good would always overcome bad, and light overcome darkness. In this world, there are only the few dark forces seem to be greater than the force of light. Why? Because it makes so much noise. But in reality, light, which is the, the clean beasts, they are always more than the darkness than clean beasts. You see? God said, take seven pairs of clean animals. Those are the animals that you can eat, the animals that you can use for sacrifice. But of them clean beasts, which you shouldn't touch, take only two pairs. So it means that one, the unclean beasts have to be amongst us. There's a role they're playing. So you can't say, well, I wish in this world there was no forces, no enemies, no witches, no wizards. No, 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 no. There's a role they're playing. They have to be amongst us. At the same time, the claim beasts have to be there too. It's positive and negative. You know, you cannot have electricity if you only have positive. No. You go to have positive wire, negative wire. And then combine both of them and you have light. But you have only positive wire, there's no relation. No matter how many positive wires you have, unless there's negative wire there, you will never produce electricity. So the unclean beast symbolizes some amount of darkness which has to be present. You wonder why God allows, the Bible says that among the children of God there are tears. Why does God allow that? Because they have a role to play. See? Fowls, seven pairs, male and female. Male and female, why? Because they were going to replenish the earth after God destroyed the whole earth with the flood. There have been no animals left. So those seven pairs will begin to reproduce themselves and replenish the earth. Now, the seven pairs of every kind of clean beasts. And there's a lot of animals. And then the seven pairs, two pairs of every one clean beasts. Not just one pair. Uh, two pairs of each. So they were supposed to replenish the earth which were cleansed by the judgments. So in seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from all the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. You can see that Noah, this is why God chose him. He had a very obedient heart. To obey God. He did not question God. He didn't say, God, ah, why do you have to, uh, you have to rain? Why do you have to count seven pairs? Why do you have to? No. Obey first. Trust and obey. That's what God commands us to do. But many of us, when God is speaking to us, we begin to question our mind. Is this really true? Is this of God? Why do I have to do this? It doesn't make sense to me. Or oh, if I did this, People will call me fanatic or oh, all these questions. That's unbelief. If God is speaking to you, don't even hesitate one minute. Once you begin to hesitate, the devil has finished you already. This is what happened to Eve. God told her something, don't eat the fruits. The day you eat it, you're going to die. She began to argue with Satan. Say, oh, God said, you don't eat it. She said, Satan, go to hell. God told me that's it. I don't need anything from you. But Satan changed her mind. And she believed Satan. She lost paradise, she lost the end of with her husband. So say now I was 600 years old when the flood was upon the earth, and I went in with the sons and the sons of our eight of them. We had three sons, three wives making six, then Noah and his wife making eight into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Clean beasts, beasts that are not clean, fowls, everything that creeps over the ark, they all went into the ark. They went in two and two. It's like a marriage. Each pair, male and female, going hand in hand to the ark. 
God must have commanded them to collect it because there's no way that Noah can collect seven pairs, two pairs of snakes, male and female. And so you guys follow me to the ark. <laughs> God himself would have done that. It's a miracle by itself. Of, of rats, of giraffes, of all these animals. They all went to that ark because God commanded them. And after seven days, the waters of the flood are upon the ark. So this is a picture of the coming judgment of God upon this earth. And you and I have been given the invitation again. Are you going to surrender your life to Christ and come to the ark of salvation? Or are you going to continue to do what you've been doing before? Because you don't know when the judgment is going to come. You've got to be ready. You've got to behave as if every day is your last day on this earth. And live a holy, righteous life. So what do you call me today? I don't know why I picked up the phone. Actually, it was a God ordained appointment because normally I don't pick up the phone, but something just told me to pick it up. I was in the church and I ran and picked it up. And this person said, Oh, is this a uh, church? Uh, I said, Yes. He said, Oh, where is it? I told her, So, oh, is it the one on Notre Dame? I said, No, we're in Flora. I said, Well, I'm a Christian and um, I have a few questions for you. <laughs> First of all, he asked, What kind of Bible we are using? This church. So I told him, I said, okay, that's the first question. I said, his name was Jason. And I think he said he lives around here. And he said, oh, I want to know whether what you believe on this subject. He said, what subject? He said, do, uh, do you say some churches believe that once you are saved, you are always saved. And some churches don't believe that. And some churches are not sure. He said, what do you believe in your church? So I told him that we don't believe in eternal salvation. I believe that even if you're saved, you have to walk out to salvation with fear and trembling every day till you reach the kingdom of God. Then I said, what if you have saved, you're saved now and then you turn against Christ, you don't believe anymore, you start worshiping idols? I said, will God be right and be that kind of a person to heaven? The person has turned his back on him. For so many years, even though he was originally saved, then he said, Oh, he believed in eternal salvation. Because the word of God says that uh, those ones who belong to me, that uh, I give them eternal life, and nobody can snipe them from his hand. That was the passage he quoted. So he said that he believed that once you are saved, always saved. Then he asked a few other questions. Do we have a crash for babies because of the children? And what how are we having service and all this stuff? But it was significant to me that he asked that question. Because he said he believed that once he's saved, he's always saved. And there are many people who believe that. Satan has lied to them. When, that, when Jesus said, Those who belong to me, I give them eternal life. It means those who are walking with him on the road to heaven. Who are in spirit, who are obeying his commandments, nobody can strike them away from his hand. Because they are with Jesus. But having gone against Jesus and living your own life, doing your own thing, now worshiping idols, you don't believe anymore, you are no longer with Jesus. And there's nothing that can do. And you are no longer with him, so he has no right. He doesn't have to. No, you are no longer with him. You are no longer will have eternal life because you've left him. You know? So that is own belief. That's what he told me on the phone that, oh, this is my belief, but I said it doesn't matter, you know, we can disagree about that. I kept quiet, I didn't want him to, you know. But it was clear that many people who believe that they're okay, once they've known Christ and saved, they can do anything, they would always be saved. If that was the case, that means that God does, you don't need to obey God. So God, you have to just get saved and start living your own life. You are guaranteed to go to heaven. Whether you commit fornication, adultery, uh, you kill you, it doesn't matter. You can you go to heaven anyway, you have a passport to heaven. That's what he believes. But it's not true. If that was the case, there'd be no need for judgment. You know, everybody would go to heaven, right? Uh, all you have to do is say, I'm saved, I know Jesus, and that's it. Just do whatever you, you need to do. But there is coming a judgment. Everybody has to give account. The Bible says that once you die, it's judgments. Hebrews 9 6, I think. And, her, and everybody should give accounts of the acts they did in their bodies.
Hebrews 9. So, this is how Satan deceives many people. That, uh, Hebrews 9, um, I think it's not, it's not 6, let me see, Hebrews 9, anybody finds it, Hebrews 9, what verse it says that uh, once you die, uh, because, uh, so it was very clear, uh, 27, and it appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. See? After this, the judgment. If there was no, if there's eternal salvation, there's no need for judgment. But everybody's going to heaven, right? See? But see, there is judgment. Once you die, there's no appeal, there's no second chance, immediately you enjoy. You either go to paradise or you go to hellfire. That is it. You know? So, this flood is going to come again in terms of fire. That's what God will to destroy the heart again. And He's appealing to every one of us to come into the heart now when we can have a chance. Not after you die. Some people think, some Catholics, they believe in purgatory. It means that, oh, they believe that once you die, you go to a place of the dead and they will do some service for you and that will transfer you to heaven. <laughs> There's nothing like that. Purgatory is a big lie. They used to collect money from people. And they say, we'll pray for you, for your relatives, and they will transfer them to a place of peace. You know, no, it's immediate judgment. That's why God is appealing to you and, you and I. Surrender your life to me now. You don't know tomorrow. Many people that died in 9 11, then they left their the, uh, the houses. They never believed they would die that day. All of us are going out, coming in. You don't know when you're going to leave this heart. So what does that mean? Miss get ready. Make sure you are right with God because you don't know what tomorrow holds. So this church is the last word of salvation. Which means if you're in this church in spirit, working with God, when the judgment comes, you'll be spared. Jesus is the last word of salvation. To escape that judgment, you need to be with Jesus. When I say Jesus, it means you need to be obeying his commandments like Noah, leading a holy, righteous life. Not thinking that, oh, I've been saved, so because of that, I'm going to heaven. No. You have to give account of every act you did in your body. That's what the Bible says. Both the good and the bad. You have to give accounts. You know, those who have been there, they say that this is how it is. Those who go to heaven, that is not, this is a, they wrote, everybody that dies should line up and everybody, they won't go to hell. They are the majority, about 90%. They are just going to the left to hellfire. And they can't stop themselves. Someone just takes them. The ones go to heaven, go on the right. The few. But even that's not a guarantee because after you get to heaven, they are all naked in the big hall. And they start calling your name one by one. You call your first name, son of so, 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 come out. You can't even stop yourself. You'll stand yourself in front of the angel. You have a big television screen. Immediately you call your name, all your sins. From the day you were born till you die, this, all your sins, you're shown on that screen. Right away, in one second. If you have been born again, by the blood of Jesus Christ. His prayer comes from nowhere, blood. And that straight spray begins to remove those sins one by one, one by one, one by one. He's deleting those sins like a computer. Deleting them one by one until everything is done. Then the angel will smile and continue. But if there are some sins that were not covered by the blood, the angel will frown once he frowns, that's it. You just hear, depart from me. And the wind will come. <gasps> Carry them to hell. See? 
So even those that go to the right, they are still examined because there is no sin that can enter heaven. So God is calling you and I and giving us the last chance. Say nothing but the blood of Jesus can quit me all again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Here to hear mm-hmm. and a heart to yield to him mm-hmm. to obey him every day of our lives. That is the only guarantee you and I have. Not in any other thing, but his grace. God bless you once. Mm-hmm. Amen.